With his future destined for either manual labor or part-time sales gig at Tommy Bahama, Shane settled on a career in the U.S. Navy that could provide him with the discipline and tools he needed to grow as a person without going to war. But then he was sent to Fallujah. America. So Fallujah, October 2005. We are there, the southern half of Fallujah. Our, uh, Great time to be in Fallujah, yeah, right? Yeah. yeah. Oof, huge explosion. And I was, or my instinct was cover, first of all. I didn't realize that it blew up right on him. And I thought mortars. It's like six, eight feet from me. And it, I'm like, that's a, that's a grenade. And I was like, just as, I already know what it is. Still running in the same direction it's rolling. Like, we're just buddies yeah. now. And so I had a little ditch and just dove off and right as it blew up. But uh, knocked him out for a few seconds, woke up, see blood on my hand. Uh, it's like shrapnel on the left side. And I just immediately, I was like, got that purple. <laughs> This past year in Afghanistan was the deadliest yet for American troops. Seven years into this war, U.S. commanders from Kabul to Washington are pleading for more soldiers, exposing an uncomfortable truth. There aren't enough troops on the ground to get the job done. Tonight, we're going to tell you about a small group of American soldiers who deal every day with that reality under the worst of circumstances. We lived with them for a month on a small forward operating base in eastern Afghanistan, not far from the Pakistani border. This is where the real fight against America's avowed enemy, Al-Qaeda, is happening. Lost hand grenades and moved in after their enemy, Push up. pursuing them through thick cornfields. It wasn't easy moving through those cornfields. No, it wasn't. You start losing you know, your, your sense of where everything is. You couldn't see. Uh, it's just like walking through a forest, you know, thick, thick foliage. And they got corn stalks, and they were laying in the prone. And every once in a while, I had to get down in the ground and look and see if, if they were down there. Because you knew they were in there, just, just couldn't see them. Somehow, in the midst of all that, yeah, I found a, bag. a soldier found a camera that would provide valuable intelligence later. Looks like a camera. As First Sergeant Eddie Heater led his group of men out of a cornfield, they suddenly encountered a hidden fighter. He went over to berm. The insurgent was hiding in a ditch. That was right there. That he, he was right beside me. As we came over that berm, uh, the, uh, the soldier to my left was, uh, was shot. Sergeant Marcus Vasquez had been shot in the shoulder. You got it doing good, man. You're going to be out of here before you know it. Did you get him? Yeah. I smoked that motherfucker. Sergeant Vasquez was lucky. The bullet passed straight through, and he was quickly stabilized. The medevac chopper arrived within minutes, and Vasquez was taken away to one of the main U.S. bases for surgery. Six years of active service with more than 400 patrols. By any measure, Luca has served her country. She was trained to sniff out munitions and explosives and protected the lives of thousands of American and Allied troops. Her handler, U.S. Marine Gunnery Sergeant Christopher Willingham, worked alongside her in Iraq and Afghanistan. She's incredibly smart, loyal. I thought I knew a lot about her, but when you deploy with a dog in the combat environment and you spend seven days a week with them for seven months, uh, you truly find out what the depth of, of a bond is between a dog and a handler. Luca was so good at her job, there was not one human casualty during any of her patrols. On her final mission in March 2012, she discovered a 14-kilogram roadside bomb. As she searched for additional devices, a second bomb detonated. She instantly lost her front left paw and suffered severe burns to her chest. Her handler at the time was Corporal Juan Rodriguez. I see Luca and I'm putting a tourniquet on her, on her leg. I'm um, telling her everything is good. It's just like, I'm like, everything's going to be okay, Luca. You're going to make it. Within 10 minutes, a medevac helicopter was taking Luca for emergency surgery. Her leg had to be amputated, but otherwise she made a full recovery. 
Retired from her role, 12-year-old Luca now lives in California with Willingham. Both travelled to London, where Luca received the British People's Dispensary for Sick Animals Dickin Medal for Bravery in Battle. The dog is the 67th recipient of the PDSA honour, which stretches back to the Second World War. Most importantly, she enjoys just being a dog, just relaxing, laying on the couch and going for family walks instead of combat patrols and uh, just really enjoying it. We do our best to, to keep her spoiled in her well-deserved retirement. A decorated hero now enjoying a happy retirement. Henry Ridgewell for VOA News, London.